Hey everybody, it's Catherine, and today I'm back with a video that might be applicable um, to some of you during this time of year. Um, it is about how to deal with rejection, and I know a lot of you are struggling with college rejections. I've certainly talked to a few friends that you know have struggled with schools they haven't gotten into, but I've also talked to kids that are completely fine um, with rejection. I personally consider myself someone that gets over things very quickly, you know, it'll take me a second and then I'm like, you know what, I prefer not to dwell on things I really can't change, it's not very productive and I prefer just to kind of move on to what I can do. There have been a couple of instances this semester that I have had to deal with rejection and it was a little harder than um, previously before, so I just want to talk to you about some things that I've used to cope. Um, some of these things may stick with you, some of these things may not work at all for you, but um, the things I've developed because, you know, I personally prefer not to have to depend on anyone to help me deal with rejection, so it's nice if I can just kind of deal with it and resolve my issues on my own. This advice can span anything from college to boys to any basic opportunity that you missed out on um, for one reason or another. Before I start this video, I just want to give a shout out to a specific sub uh, subscriber. Her name is Kayla Crozier. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, she's just been really, really helpful. I'm um, really good at suggesting videos. Just a great supporter. So shout out to you, Kayla. A little bit of background so you can get kind of the storyline of why I'm talking about this. Um, you can sit through this if you just want to go to the advice, but here's a little background because I will be applying it to these instances. So my first semester of college was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I was in the marching band and I interviewed and applied for a women's leadership board that I got into. I was so ecstatic about that. And then I went through the intense process of being recruited slash applying for um, the tour guide position and I was absolutely floored when I got that decision back that I was hired. Um, and so those were two things that I applied for that I was accepted to that I took very seriously and was really enamored by the fact that um, they considered me competitive enough to um, accept those positions, I guess. Um, but then the second semester went along, I kept applying for things. If you didn't know, um, I'm actually planning to graduate from college in three years. Uh, so basically, I have to treat myself as a sophomore right now, and that means that I should be involved in as many things as a sophomore is involved in. So if you think I'm an overachiever and I'm involved in a ton, it's mainly because like I'm supposed to be a year ahead of where I am right now. Um, so I was applying for two things going into my second semester. I was applying for one, um, the Global Fellows Program, which if you, you can Google it, um, it's a great thing to write about on your USC application because it's a phenomenal program. Um, basically, they take um, 100 applicants, interview 50, and then 25, um, no matter what your major is, they are paid for to go abroad um, to Asia for the summer and intern somewhere for eight weeks. Um, and I had a friend named Zach, he said bar none, that was the best experience of his USC career, so I really wanted to do that. Um, and so I applied and I got to the interview stage after I had sent in my letters of rec, sent in my application with my essay. Zach had written me a letter of rec. He definitely had put a good word in for me. Um, I thought I did pretty well in the interview and then the decisions came back and I wasn't accepted. Um, which really, really hurt because I really, really wanted that opportunity. Um, and then second, I was applying to be a Helene. I was rushing that and it's kind of like a sorority, but it's not Greek affiliated. Um, it's about service, sisterhood, and spirit. So they're like front row at the sports games. They're doing a lot of really important um, community service projects in the local community. Um, and they're also just really a really tight knit group of girls. So that application process was absolutely unreal. It was like 500 girls vying for like 18 spots it turned out to be. Um, so I certainly was not depending on getting that, but I thought, I kind of had always planned, you know, marching band tour guide first semester and then Helene second semester and I'd kind of build my portfolio that way. Um, and that didn't turn out. I got through, I passed a test, I got an interview and then the last round again they said no. Um, so those two things were a little bit like hard to deal with because I really, really wanted both of those. I have developed some great rejection skills because of those two things I'd like to share with you and I'm certainly way over those two things now. I'll be reapplying for both of those next year, um, which is a great thing to do when you're rejected is just, you know, try again in a different way. Um, it really can't hurt. If you care that much about what, you're, what you were rejected by, you'll certainly have enough strength to do it again. So that's a good segue into my section of tips. But first of all, a tip that I used while I was applying for both of these things is something I mentioned before and it's I don't let myself believe I'll have anything I want until I actually get it. Um, so whether this is studying for a test or pursuing like a love interest or like going out for a college, um, like trying to apply for that, don't let yourself believe that you're qualified or going to get in until you literally have the admission paper in your hand, until you're literally in that relationship or until you're literally um, got your test back and you have an A. 
Um, if you prepare for something like it's going to be really, really hard out of your league, that's going to make your work look so much more serious to the person. Um, I can't preach this enough, and it just helps you out. It's a bit of a defense barrier. Um, you don't expect anything. Um, expecting things just only hurts. I know it's hard to do, but really, if you can practice that, it's very valuable. Something I've really appreciated. Second. I always tell this to everyone, especially during college app season, and it's something that really does not help a lot of people, but for me it helps a lot. Um, and that's everything happens for a reason. I think it's hard for people to believe this because most of the time you use it in good scenarios, like, you know, I just got this job position in, in Boston and I love Boston, everything happens for a reason, like, ha. Ah. But a lot of times when it's hard stuff to deal with, like college rejection, and I say everything happens for a reason, they don't want to hear it. Um, so if you can tell yourself that everything happens for a reason, that's a lot better. Um, and when I say everything happens for a reason, I mean like there's a reason you didn't get that. So Global Fellows, for example, um, I have an internship opportunity again in Asia for this summer through my business program that I went to China with. I don't know how much I talked about that. Um, so I'm applying for that. So maybe I didn't get the Global Fellows because I would have a better experience, a better internship experience if I got this internship, which I'm not sure I got it yet. I'm definitely not counting on it per that advice of don't let yourself believe you have anything you want until you actually get it. So if everything happens for a reason, maybe I'm supposed to do that internship instead. Maybe I'm not supposed to intern at all this summer. I don't know. Like I just kind of have faith in the universe. I'm a little bit spiritual in that way that I just kind of believe everything falls into place the way it should. Whether you like it or not, it's right for you. Um, and with that, like it, this is kind of hard to hear, but there's a reason you weren't accepted and there's a reason you weren't a good fit. So for example, with the Global Fellows program, I'm a freshman and all the people I know were sophomores or juniors that were, that were accepted. And that's probably because they couldn't find a lot of companies that wanted to work with freshmen. It's really hard to get internships for freshmen, um, but I just wanted to be proactive and go out for it because why not? It's good to get my foot in the door, good to, good to have them see that I'm, I really want it and I'm willing to apply multiple years. Um, so I really am just kind of banking on like the fact that you know they just couldn't find um, positions open for freshmen which is totally plausible so maybe that's the reason I wasn't a good fit um, and then Helene's is a really unique program because they really hand select every new class that enters the group so with those 18 girls they did a lot of work to make sure those 18 girls would be a good range of diversity and that they would get along really really well so if I didn't fit into that I'm happy not being in that class because I want to be in a class that I really fit into and have a special place in so if they didn't think I was a good fit then I don't want to be in that group anyway if that college doesn't think you're competitive you don't want to be in the school where you're gonna feel like you're struggling all the time if they don't think you're academically fit that's one thing that you should consider. Well, I shouldn't be there anyway. There's a reason. Um, that's obviously hard to deal with. You don't want to think yourself as less competent in any way. But a lot of times it's just that, you know, you're missing one factor. Like you're just, maybe you're a business major and that organization wanted another theater major. Or maybe you're from California and they really want some more diversity from abroad. So they want some international. Um, it, or they want a girl instead of a boy. Like I, it really does not matter. So with that, if, you don't, if you're not going to be a good fit, you really don't want to go through the trouble of applying It'd be horrible to go out for my Global Fellows program, go through all that trouble, and then figure out that I'm really not comfortable in that place, that the internship isn't right for me because they don't trust me with tasks I'm a freshman, or you don't want to be in a, a college where you worked so hard to get there, um, and they accepted you because maybe you weren't the perfect fit, but you were a decent fit, and then you don't feel comfortable there. So you really want to make sure that everywhere you're going, it's a good fit for you. Um, and if they don't accept you, you probably shouldn't be there anyway. Like, it's hard to hear, but that's what you got to know. And then something that I hear a lot during the college rejection season, or college decision season, I'm sorry, is that, you know, oh, congrats, you got into Brown, you really deserve it. Or like, for me, like, oh, a bunch of kids that get into USC, like, oh my god, you deserved it so much, you're a perfect fit, like, blah, blah, blah. That does not help to tell people, um, because quite frankly, specifically for the college admissions process, it's not about deserving it anymore. It's just straight up not about deserving it. You just can't claim that anymore. There are a ton of kids who deserve it and don't get it just because the college application process is just a crapshoot at this point. Um, it's not about qualifications anymore. It's really just about everyone being super qualified but because of the sheer number of schools we apply to, they just can't accept the number of students they used to. Like you probably did deserve it, um, but that doesn't make them want to accept you anymore. So um, when people tell you you, know, you really deserved it, whether that feels good or not, like. That's just not something I advise to tell people because it doesn't really factor into how decisions are made, really. So once you've been rejected from that club, that organization, everything happens for a reason. Something will come up very soon for you. You know, one door closes, the other door opens. 
that always happens, whether it's a day later or two months later, there's gonna come along something that works for you at the time. Like you might not like it as much, but that's the right stepping stone to get to where you want. And a lot of times it might be something you like even more, a group that'll appreciate you even more. I'm applying for two different like kind of fellowships here and I haven't been accepted to either of these programs yet, but maybe if I am, that's where I'm supposed to be in, on this campus. That's where I'll better serve on this campus and that's the kind of people that I'm supposed to be around. I really just trust in that. If there aren't other opportunities to uh, apply to, just focus on your other priorities. Um, to applying to both those things really took a lot of time out of my work um, and out of tour guiding, a lot of other that stuff, so I can refocus into my main priorities that I was dealing with at the moment um, and really make sure those were strong. Um, because if you can show that your portfolio is strong without those things, it'll be a lot easier for them to see your worth when you do apply again if you choose to do so. So those are all the things I've kind of worked with over my past 18 year, 19 years of life, I guess. Let me know what you liked about this video down below. Um, also subscribe if you wanna see more videos and I wish you the best with whatever you're dealing with right now. Um, it'll be over before you know it, you'll be recovered before you know it. Um, and just try not to dwell on things that you can't change because that's really not gonna help you in any way whatsoever. Um, but I love you all so much and Cather out.